Okay, hello, hello, hello. How is everybody? Good to be here. Uh, you can all hear me, see me okay. And today is Thursday, the 19th of September. Hope everybody is having a great day wherever you are. We are, Jane and I, are still in Greece and obviously having a bit of a break. Uh, but certainly uh, we were on 360 last night and obviously with the news that we were given, uh, I thought it would be really cool to do a recap today. So here we are uh, doing a recap to the best of my ability, obviously, uh, to try and break things down a little bit and to let's make sense and make sure, more importantly, that we get the right information out there. Uh, let's just see in the chat, just make sure you can uh, hear me and see me okay. Uh, before we get going, because obviously I want to make sure my audio. Thank you, M. Kaylee. That's very, very kind. Uh, as always, uh, like to start off with what did Ash Mufara look like? How was he? What was his mannerisms? And I think uh, when he came on, um, he looked uh, extremely upbeat, happy, uh, pretty fired up. If you noticed, he was very relaxed, uh, smiling a lot. And this always encourages me when I see him uh, like this. And I think especially after the news that he got uh, three or four weeks ago with all the data being intact, I think it's really given him a much more sense of solidity as far as on passive is concerned. He really now is in control. And this recap really does sort of go around those areas of what he was telling us yesterday of how things are progressing. Uh, I thought it was very informative uh, what he brought to the table yesterday. And one thing I want to reiterate, but I'm going to go over this as we go through the recap, it really is important that we take what he said in the, the value that he took it, not expand it, not twist it, not it, not make it into something that it isn't. Uh, let's just keep it very, very simple and to exactly what he said. So anyway, without further ado, let's get started. And as always, I'll give it my very best shot to break down what exactly happened on, on Passive 360 yesterday. He came on and he said that we are in a better position than we have been for many months. And actually further on into the... Uh, 360. He actually said, uh, we really are in a better place than we have been for almost two years, he said. But certainly, uh, I think a lot of the problems that he'd faced over the last six-month period, uh, a lot of these now are sorted, or at least they have been uh, negotiated, round, or whatever we want to talk about those. Uh, and we are certainly moving forward. He said, don't exaggerate what I'm about to say. We are working round the clock uh, to get this next phase of on passive moving. Now, before I go into what he was saying, let's just briefly talk about uh, the next phase as far as uh, what is going to be happening. It's really important to know and understand that the first thing that's going to happen is we will get the ecosystem back and we will be able to log into our accounts and see all of our data information that was there beforehand. We might not necessarily see all of the ecosystem as it was before. We might not also start the other phases as soon as it opens as far as where we are going to be headed. And Ash Mufara actually talked about this, and I'm going to go over this in a moment, that we are looking at getting those doors back open again. Why is that part so important? I will come to that when I bring it up in the recap. If I don't, make sure somebody in the chat reminds me. He said that uh, we owe you an explanation to what happens and how we got to this stage in the process. Now, what does that mean reading between those lines? It basically means that once we open those doors, once we get back going again, he will call a webinar or come on to somebody else's and he will tell us exactly the stages of what had happened over the last 
four months, six months, two years, or however long it may be, and also explain the people that were involved with in all of that. Uh, he also did reiterate and say that the main important thing at the moment is for us to get back going again, not to dwell on who was at fault, what happened, all the rest of it. These are just mechanical semantics of what happened within the business. It's not the goal of the company to look back at those sort of things. It's the goal of the company to move forward and to make sure that we start again with the confidence, with the bang, and be in a much better place than we were before. And this is exactly what is going to happen. But he does uh, acknowledge that we are owed an explanation of what happened and how we got to here. And this will happen in due course, guys. So don't worry if you're saying, well, how did we get here? What happened? And all the rest of it. This will come out in due course. He also said that his confidence level at the moment is 3,000%. He said because he is that confident about the success of the relaunch of On Passive and about how we are going to be moving forward. This, by the way, guys, is amazing news for us. If he was confident about what the ability of On Passive is going to be doing in the past, he's now saying he's even more confident that this relaunch and the next phase of on passive is going to be a huge, huge success. He also then went into about how this is all going to pan out moving forward. He said from uh, this Sunday coming, he said he will be able to have access to the ecosystem once again. Does this mean we are going to be going live from this Sunday? No, it does not. He said, what has happened is the team have produced a working platform, okay, for him exclusively. It's a bit like, I suppose, in layman's terms, this is the owner's very own control center, okay? He has got eyes on absolutely everything to do with on passive. I think maybe what happened in the past is that he allowed certain things with OnPassive to be run exclusively by other people. And so he didn't exactly have his eyes on the whole workings of OnPassive. With this new uh, system that is going to be coming out, he will have eyes on exactly what is going on all of the time. That is coming out to him on Sunday. At the same time that that happens, there is going to be what they call a working department of the uh, uh, the system that is going to go live as well on Sunday. This is to test all the API, making sure that the servers and all the rest of it are working correctly. Does this mean we will see it? No, it doesn't. But it means that it's going to be live on the internet, and it means that they are be, uh, be able to test it in real time, okay? This brings us on to the next part of what he was saying. Within seven days of that, so within seven days of Sunday, he said we could probably go live. Now, if we did go live, and I have to reiterate that this is exactly what he is pushing for, by the way, and I'll come to that in a moment uh, to explain that a little bit more. It does mean that there might be things within your ecosystem that are missing. There might be a few bugs within the system. There might be some bits and pieces that aren't working to perfection. But if we go live in eight days after Sunday or nine days or 10 days and every single day after that, the system will become better and more perfected so on and so on. Now, he has got a window, hasn't he, really? Because if you remember, he told us that he wants this done and dusted to go live by the end of September. Uh, who is that? To send me a super sticker. Let me just sit. Andrew Colhern. Thank you so much, my friend. That's very kind of you. Almost missed you. Sorry. So he has got actually a little bit of leeway. He's, if he's saying that this Sunday, which is what, the 21st or so, 
seven days, 27th, few days after that. You know, we have got a bit of leeway as far as that is concerned. But he also said later on in the meeting that it is his desire to open the ecosystem as soon as possible, regardless of whether it's perfect, regardless if there's going to be a few things that are uh, not working 100% correct, but it's going to be open and then they can do it as in a work in progress. Now, that is his decision. It's not ours. And obviously, he will have these meetings with his departments to make sure uh, that everybody is happy with how that all progresses. But it really is good news that he is keen for that to uh, happen sooner rather than everyone. He really wants everyone to enjoy the process, OK, without the communication issues, he said, and then we can go live. So my gut feeling is if he's happy with uh, how it pans out from Sunday onwards, OK, then there's a fair chance that within seven days or so of that, we will then have access into our ecosystem. He said there is also another scenario. He said, if you want to let the teams continue to work until it is ready to go without any working issues, this would then push that live further on down the line. Is it a bad thing per se? No, it's not necessarily a bad thing. But I think as far as the foundership and affiliates are concerned, then we don't mind. Well, I certainly don't. And I'm sure you guys are the same. We wouldn't mind at least having access so that we can see our back offices, make sure everything's intact and watch the working progress as it goes. This is entirely up to Ash. And obviously he will bring us up to date with how that is going to pan out. He said, we will love, you will love what is coming and where we are going. He's said this many times, hasn't he? But I really do get the impression now and the feel from him that he is so, so confident of what is going to be coming our way. Now, I don't necessarily just mean financially. I mean the whole package. On Passive really is a product and service that is going to give people the ability to better themselves, not just financially, but better themselves personally. And I really do believe this is almost part and parcel of what On Passive has done for so many people uh, already. He said it really has been a remarkable work where we are, uh, where we have come from since we started. He talked about this later on as well. He said, we re now really have the right people in place and very trustworthy teams. And we've expanded into many other locations. He also did say that the business is fluid at the moment. He said that things are going to be changed as far as what we see. So restructuring is just a normal part and process of any business that is moving forward. So let's not be shocked or surprised if certain things happen, okay, or we see certain things happening. This is just normal, guys. He said, we will know later, uh, okay, about uh, where we are and what is going. But he said that we are expanding into other locations. He said, all that has happened has been an incredible lesson to him and also on passive. At the end of the day, guys, it's a six year journey and it has been a journey and not everything has gone according to plan. And he's the first person to admit this. He said it yesterday that, you know, certain things happened that maybe he should have taken more care of or control of a long time ago. But the thing is, is we are still here. We're still moving forward. And those doors are going to be open and we're going to come back bigger, better and stronger than we were before. He actually went into a little bit depth about depth about this, didn't he, as well, saying that many companies wouldn't be able to weather the storm that we have endured. Many companies would have folded, left and, you know, ceased to exist because of the amount of pressure. This isn't our CEO. 
And this certainly isn't why he is doing it. He is doing it for the benefit of us primarily, but more importantly, he's doing it for the benefit of humanity and mankind and everybody who is out there. He said, we need to stop thinking about income all of the time, okay? It is one of the steps within the business, but there is a lot more to on passive than just the uh, income. He said also, and he asked our permission uh, to this as well, he wanted to bring to the table a bit more about him and the business. He said that uh, he doesn't really like talking about himself because his past is his past. He is more focused on Ash Mufara in the future. Ash Mufara of what he can do. He said he's just turned 51 and he's been working on the On Passive project now for six years prior to that. He said for four decades before we met him, he said he really is proud of his accomplishments and everything that he's done. We've heard on many occasions that he was one of the top affiliates, one of the top marketers in everything that he has done. If you were to look and dive deep into the history of Ashmi Farah, you will find some of the things that he has done for other businesses. And the reason he is saying this is that when he comes to 360 or anywhere else, he doesn't want to talk about himself. He wants to talk about stuff that is going to be of benefit for all of us. He said, I'll be very transparent at any time. And our, what he is after is for us to be inspired, us to be able to dream big again. He said he wants us to feel that his honesty, truthful and genuine way that he speaks puts us all in a much better place. Now, I don't know about you, but I really did feel the sincerity in his voice when he was talking about this yesterday. He's very conscious, isn't he, about how he how he gives us information. He, he, he knows that we are hanging on to his every word, that we want to hear and listen to what he has to say. But he's also very conscious of not giving us information that is not of value, information that's not going to benefit us in any way. And really, he was opening up a little bit about how that he doesn't like talking about himself, but he likes talking about what the business and what he is trying to achieve that is going to help us and benefit us in the future. He said the overall theme is about going in a direction that has never been done before. And he said that if you deliver this in a truthful, passionate and honest, pure, intentional way, then the, capa uh, the capacity to be able to achieve those goals is infinity. If you can do that, then you attract the right people to go on the journey with you. Now, I'm sure that we are those right people. We have been on this journey with him for a very long time now. And I certainly believe, and I said this last night, that I have certainly changed through the six-year journey that I've had with On Passive. And I believe it is for the better. I believe I've become a better person because of On Passive, because I've learned so much, not just from doing what I do, but more importantly, from him as well. And this is what he was talking about when he was saying all this, is that he wants us to be able to grow as much as he is and the business is as well. He said, I can assure you that I am here to make a better place for you in this world. We are going to a beautiful destination and the world will be a better place because of where we are looking forward to. He said, I come here to deliver what I can, but not to burn the burn the clock. Only the best value for your time of listening. He said, stick with us because you are going to be going places. We are doing all the hard work. We are paying for everything. We are taking all the hits. But the biggest thing of all is that the gain 
that you are going to get from this business. Now, for a CEO to come on and say all of these things, to say that we are doing everything, you just sit tight, you enjoy the ride, but you're the one that's going to benefit from it. You don't hear that very often, do you? We really don't hear that from any other CEOs to say that we're doing it for you. We're not doing it for ourselves. All other businesses or CEOs always talk about the value of their business, how much their business is worth, how much uh, their stocks and shares are worth. These are the types of rhetoric that they talk about. Not Ash Mufara. He's talking about, let us do the hard work. Let's take the hits. Let us negotiate and get round problems because it's going to be a benefit and gain for you in the future. He's talked about this many times and he said this as well. Have a look at any documentation within the on passive uh, um, papers and you will see that none of it talks about the gain that is going to be going to Ash Mafara. It is all external to him. He is doing it for the good and the benefit of the business and for us. He said, I believe we are now very close to being able to control everything without having the internal issues that we have experienced before. For me, this 360 was a clear outline that we are going to be opening the doors very, very shortly. It was clear to me that he is saying we are not quite over the hill of what had happened, but we are so, so close. The main important thing for me yesterday was what he said four weeks ago, three weeks ago, that is going to be done within the month of September, is going to happen. It's important for me that we stick to our beliefs. We stick to what we know. We don't bend the truth. But more importantly, we stick by our CEO and the company. I said it on 360 before Ash came on. Stay in the course. How important it is to stay the course. At the end of the day, guys, what else have we got? There is no other shiny objects that are going to bring and deliver what on passive is going to do for us. So why not just stick the course? Why not believe that this guy, Ash Mufara, is going to deliver on what his promise is, is going to bring a difference to the internet and the world, and it is called on passive. That's the recap from me. I hope it has helped to maybe sort out a few of the problems that people were thinking. I'm just going to recap once again. This Sunday, he is going to be able to access the ecosystem from his own platform, plus the departments will have access as far as the internet is concerned with their own APIs. And maybe within seven days of that, we will have access as well. So let's look forward. OK, it is coming. It is opening up once again. And as soon as it happens, guys, our CEO will inform us of the next phase of On Passive. That's it from me. Bye for now.